Almost 30 years ago, Molly's life changed forever when she was brutally attacked by a man she believes to be the Yorkshire Ripper. Mo thankfully survived, but she was left deeply traumatised by the attack, unable to venture outside her home without being haunted by terrifying flashbacks. Well, desperate for help, Mo contacted the Speakmans and they took on one of their toughest challenges yet. In 1981, Peter Sutcliffe, dubbed the Yorkshire Ripper, was convicted of murdering 13 women and attempting to murder seven others. One lady who believes she was one of his victims was Mo Lee. At the time, she was a 19-year-old art student in Leeds, but 35 years on, she's still tortured by what she says happened on that night. We were really conscious at the time that we had to all get home quite early because there was a, a curfew happening in Leeds because there was this serial killer roaming the streets. The night that I was attacked, there was an opportunity to make, for me to make a shortcut to get into town quicker to catch the bus. And um, this chap came out from behind me. And as soon as I turned around, I thought, this is a really dangerous situation. Started to run. And all I could hear were these footsteps getting quicker and quicker and quicker behind me and then I just felt this whack of a blow to the top of my head and I just saw the pavement coming right up towards me and I blanked out I was unconscious I was beaten unconscious I remember waking up in a hospital ward my mum and dad arrived and they walked past the bottom of the bed I couldn't recognize them. they didn't recognize me because my head was so swollen and I was so bruised and battered. Unlike other people, I can't, I can't go to bed sober. Because if I go to bed sober, I have night traumas. Admitting the huge impact this has had on her life is overwhelming. And Nick and Eva are keen to begin Mo's therapy straight away. I know, but it's gonna be better. If you can have a good night's sleep, what would that mean to you? Oh, it would be amazing. It would be life-changing. Could you go back and visit the scene of the crime? If I were to say to you, let's go there right now, could you do it? No. That would be too frightening. OK, I understand. My last test yeah. would be to ask you if you were able to look at a picture. A piece of cloth. I will do that. I, I, I'll try. We don't want to upset. I know. Oh, we're not. I know. I trust you. OK, so you just say stop. I will. OK. I want to show you the back first. Can you tell me what you're feeling? I can see through the paper. OK. Is that enough? I don't want me to turn it round. <sighs> I'm feeling really, really, really frightened. I think like that. Enough. I just want to stop being frightened. I just want to stop running from this fear. You're a victim one night 35 years ago. You were getting on with your life, you had a great life, you were very happy, and someone came along and took that away from you on that night. But you were a victim on the night. You're looking at me and you're not believing me. I'm, 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 I'm just a bit shocked that but when, you, when you say it like that, it just, it's really raw and uh, shocking. You should have stopped then because you're not a victim. It's hard to admit. But once you do admit, that's when you can start to heal. We have to make it clear that Peter Sutcliffe was never charged or arrested for this particular attack, but the police are in the process of reviewing Mo's case, and she's with us now alongside Nick and Eva as we find out how she got on. And, and uh, of course, you've just watched that VT, yeah. and within that were numerous pictures mm. of him. Yes. And I'm looking at you, and I watched you very carefully oh, when yeah. that went through, and you didn't react in no. the way you had before. No, that's very true. I'm fine with looking at that picture. What have you done? How did you do it? Well, you know that <clears throat> when this happened to Mo, and we've said this before, that people create a schema and she was stuck in time, and we wanted to look at the schema 
unpack it, look at the sub-schemas, and then challenge them. A schema being... The schema is a thought process or a reference that we use for future behaviour. And once you unpack that and challenge it with overwhelming evidence to the contrary and condition it, then the subsequent behaviour changes as well. And that's what we did with Mo, and that's why the, you know, she's, she's actually no longer a victim. Yeah. Well, there's, there's these five stages, isn't there, that you took her through. So talk us through some of these. OK, so the first thing, um, Mo, one of her biggest issues was that she would have night terrors and she couldn't sleep because when she went to bed at night she would be completely petrified. So she did start to self-medicate and she could only sleep if she had a glass of wine. Right. And that was something that she felt she needed to stop. Um, obviously, I think that since we worked yeah. with you... No, don't need that. Mm. And how's your sleeping anymore. doing? I am sleeping like a young person. Oh, I yes. feel like I sleep like a baby now. It just change your life. Mm -hmm. Something and also like the, that. The, really. The yeah. fear of someone coming up behind you. Yeah, that was. Uh, there was. There was two. There was also. Um, even with the crew when we were filming, Mo was. She's. Anybody with PTSD is is hyper vigilant, mm -hmm. and if anybody came anywhere at the back of her, she was really jumpy and, and got very scared and very upset and uh, she couldn't bear the thought of going back to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, but we took her back to the hospital and what was remarkable to see was that she was, we were with her, we were chatting, there was people walking behind her, she didn't even notice. What well, about the scene of the attack? Yeah, that, that was something that we wanted to go back to just so that Mo could actually identify that it was gone and it was over. Well, we, we've got that and we're going to take a look at this now. So this is the first time you ever went back to the place where this attack took place. So just so we're not have you any anxiety at all? No. Nothing? No. OK. And the last time that you tried to visit here was... It was pretty devastating. So you can feel the difference? I can feel a massive difference. Would you ever have believed that you'd have been able no. to have gone back there? No. It's, it's, it's quite remarkable. We've got one final, uh, one final thing, the yeah, picture that you couldn't look at mm. um, earlier on. This was something that we haven't yet tested Mo with because if you can, you know, understand that this man appears in newspapers and, again, and has a vigil... many people. Many. Um, and this is something we've, we would like to, as a final test. How do you feel about looking at that? It's absolutely fine. My fear is gone. As we, uh, as we said incredible. before, there is, we, we don't know who it was that attacked you on that light, but the work with the Speakman's obviously changed your life. Yeah. It's, it's just made me complete. It's made me feel like um, I'm at one with myself. It's given me calmness and my anxiety has massively dissipated. Well, welcome well done. back. And well yeah, done well to welcome you, back. Back as well. It's a lovely Thank way you. of Thank putting you guys. it. The attack happened to Mo in essentially perhaps one minute. Mm. And yet she's been alive, we worked out, for 28 million minutes. So, you know, you, you, we can make a choice. We can say, look, do we want to focus on this one minute or do we want to look at the other minutes? You see, essentially, a lot of things with therapy, which, is, which we believe is a false belief, that if you've had something, Mo's had this for 35 years, so it's easy to say she's had it for such a long time, so potentially it could take 35 years mm. for her to get over it. Mm. Whereas we'd like rather look back at the scheme and say, how long did it take to create it? A minute. Mm. So, in theory, how... You know, is it possible that it can take a minute to take it away? So what? So you've had many different therapies yeah. along the way trying to deal with this. Yeah, you're diagnosed with post-traumatic stress mm. disorder, and I went to see a specialist to deal with that. Mm. I went into group therapy, seven years of it, and you're told that you've got a deep-rooted issue. And yet, within two sessions of being with the Speakmans, I no longer have a deep-rooted issue. And do you think that's because by being told you had a deep-rooted issue, well, it, that it, issue it, became deep-rooted? It compounds the situation. It compounds yeah. your, your understanding of, of what your condition is. And but so if you take that away, then it, is, it just leaves you with, with who you were before that started. We watched, uh, watched on the programme that you, you believe that it was Peter Sutcliffe who, yes, uh, who attacked I you. Saw but, him. but we don't, you know, there is no proof he's never been charged with that but yes. what impact do you think this could have in the future on other victims of crime if if this therapy this treatment was available to other people it should be on the national health it really should be it should be provided for everybody who's there aren't suffered. just you guys doing this are, are you are, the only ones unfortunately yeah, it's, it's the therapy Currently. that we created 
currently, mm. but we're working on sharing it out. That's, that's you the dream. work on that a bit quicker, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, was, it was an extraordinary thing. Uh, yeah, and thank you for coming on today. It's remarkable and yeah. it's brilliant to share it. Thank you well, for well the done, opportunity. You for doing it. Well done, you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. to my website so if you can back it up with something else the more you're going to break that down oh <gasps> no oh. <laughs> you look like a different lady today. yeah wow. we just wanted to come and visit and just say yeah you know, well you see me at my best i love my teaching yeah but i'm much more calm about it i mean i've always had the experience of being a teacher but it, there's just like this little nest of calmness in me now oh. which you gave me my life has changed quite considerably since I met Nick and Eva. I've become much more self-confident and life in general has just leveled into a calmer, a calmer place for me to be and exist in. It's been really, really good. You need to get now. It yeah. Just, it just makes our work just yeah. so worthwhile. Oh, <laughs> oh.